What is up? It's a figure hunter, and today we have the full and final review for the Polar Pacer. Now, I am going to do an in depth review for this because I feel like this is an excellent solution for CrossFit and high intensity interval training type people, and I'm going to break down why. I've seen a lot of reviews that compare the Pacer to the Pacer Pro, which already came out and many reviews were already completed. And they say, well, here's look up in the corner and you'll see like a full summary review. We're just going to get into this as a standalone watch because I think this rules them all. And that's a pretty bold statement. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. Lots of other reviews to come. I test and track devices for CrossFit and high intensity interval training versus all the running, running, swimming, and biking videos that are out there. And at the end of this video, we're also going to compare it to some of the other major players in the similar price point from other manufacturers. So we're going to dive in with the basics of this. We all just want to be able to see like in CrossFit, in a CrossFit training regimen, you want to be able to have a functional day-to-day -day watch Sure, definitely. But you also want to be able to track your workouts and have some sort of gauge of the intensity of that workout versus other workouts. You want to be able to track your load of intensity that you've carried, like the volume of intensity, not the volume of time, to see how much your body is maintaining and are you pushing the paces as much as you have in past weeks. And we also want to be able to see what our recovery looks like and make sure we have some sort of holistic approach to be able to provide guidance on whether we need more recovery or whether we should change our workout programming for that particular day. And so this checks all the boxes. And we're gonna look at in depth what you get when you get the Polar Pacer. I am not talking about the Pro, I'm talking about the $199 Polar Pacer. I think it is a fantastic solution on the market today for tracking a CrossFit or high intensity interval training type of lifestyle. So what we're gonna look at today is we're gonna talk about the specs, then we're going to look at a hands-on of the watch. We're going to look at an overview of the app because I want you to have some familiarity with the app in the Polar lineup. Then we're going to come back together and look at the fitness side. We're going to look at the heart rate analysis to see how much accurate how accurate the heart rate, the optical heart rate sensor is. And then we're going to look at the watch, what you know, sort of fitness aspects you see on the watch, and then what fitness aspects you can evaluate and see on the app, both from the individual workouts to tests and monitoring of your overall fitness level and to sort of tracking out the future. And then we're gonna last look at all the wellness side. We're gonna look at what you can see on the watch and then what you can see in the app for evaluating your wellness and recovery from one workout to another or from day to day to day with general life. So with that, we're gonna dive into the specs and I'm just sort of flying through this. I have been busy with work. I didn't go out of town this weekend. I'm just preparing for Murph with a pulled hamstring and some sort of tweak back issue. So I'm just gonna do slow and steady for Murph. That's my only goal this weekend and I'm still overwhelmed with work. So I'm just gonna dive through this and we're just gonna speed through as much as we can get. So the specs are it's $200, that's fantastic. It includes nightly recharge, which is a combination of your autonomic nervous system rejuvenation as you slept and the overall sleep evaluation. It includes Training Load Pro, which is an evaluation of how much work you put in this week versus the past four weeks. It includes cardio load um, score for each individual workout that in just evaluates the exertion level of that workout. It only weighs 40 grams. It's, only, it's 45 millimeters in width, which I actually like that width a lot, but it's only 11 and a half millimeters thick. And that is one of the lightest and thinnest relative to the size of the diameter of the watch of any watches that are out there. And you can go with like the ultra lightweight, but you know, none of, we're all doing 50 pound single arm dumbbell snatches. We're not gonna notice 40 grams or 35 grams or 52 grams. So it's all okay there. Um, it's supposed to have two times the faster processor of the Polar Vantage M2. And so that's what this is. This is getting rid of the Vantage M2. Do not buy the Vantage M2. If you have it, take a hammer and hit it because the Vantage M2 is just lacking in a lot of feature, in my opinion. Mainly you can't control the backlight, so it's not really worthwhile. This has backlight adjustability, so you can jack up or turn up the backlight to at least close to the maximum setting, making it usable. Um, it has you know, the same thickness of Gorilla Glass 3, as well as the screen is brought point, you know, three millimeters closer to the glass, so it's got supposedly have better readability. It's got a seven day battery life, but I have had mine on high. So the highest setting you can get on the backlight, and I'm getting five and a half to six days, totally fine there. No problem whatsoever. It still does include fuel-wise, which tells you a depletion of your 
proteins and carbs and fats over the course of a workout if you wanted to rejuvenate or regenerate. If you were in a competition, you could scale your uh, how much you know, energy you need to take on from one workout to the next. It's got FitSpark, which gives you daily recommendations. And if you're, you know, bad scores on the wellness side, then it'll give you soft and easy recommendations. If you got strong scores on the wellness side, a good sleep recovery, it's going to give you harder FitSpark. So that's just like a recommended training plan. You can just sort of dive in and it's how you do these body weight exercises or run in these intervals. So with that, let's look at the watch. Let's look at it compared to the Pacer Pro, which is the big brother that came out. And I still feel like is a lesser actual offering compared to this for CrossFit use. We'll look at the new charging unit. We'll look at the app and then come back together. All right, so here you have it. This is it, and this is the shorter band. You get two different lengths of bands. It's sort of a gray, gray, I don't know, it looks gray, but it is like, I think it's one of those new types of rubber, I can't remember what it's called. Um, 45 millimeters across, 11 millimeters, 11 and a half millimeters thick. It has this new design. Obviously, you can see there's um, 10 different colors or 10 different diodes. It's, you know, got orange and red and green, so all different colors, but now it's flush and flat against the back. Whereas you can see on the Vantage V2 that it's got this sort of raised look to it, which makes definitely leaves an impression on your wrist, but actually turns out to be less accurate. So this is more accurate than this. So this is the Vantage V2, same sort of diodes. I didn't turn it on, so it's the same color scheme. And this is coming in like 60% accurate. We'll see the accuracy here. Um, but you can see it's it's just overall, it is a really, really sharp looking. Like it's all plastic, sure, all plastic. No premium materials other than the Gorilla Glass on the front. But it the buttons have sort of a, you know, um, I forget, nerved. I forget what the word is for that. But, you know, it's the same button layout as all the other watches. It's a 20 millimeter, so definitely sort of a smaller um, overall width, but 45 millimeter face. And, you know, obviously with the fact you can increase the backlight now, you have all the beauty of it. Um, so this is the Pacer Pro. So you can see that it's it's very similar, except it's got like sort of a smoothed edge and you have the aluminum edge here and non-plastic, but aluminum buttons. So you have that sort of premium quality. Um, they are gonna be the same thickness, and there's a different band design with the pacer, but you can swap it out. You can pull out these pens and go with something that looks almost just like this, where you can buy traditional bands for it. Um, but besides that, you know, there's a barometric altimeter on the pacer pro, and it does like hill splitter. It does a lot of running features that just aren't going to be capable on this, but that's the primary thing. But they still are going to accomplish all the things you would need it to accomplish for CrossFit. And when I look at these, I, Definitely like the aluminum, it looks cool. And then look at this, this is what's crazy to me. This is what's crazy. This is the Polar Vantage V2. You know, so this is $599, it is all aluminum body. It is really cool. I really wish they would change that back piece, which I'm sure they will on the Vantage V3, but it is a really good looking watch, but it's, $400 more, it's $600, or maybe it's discounted somewhere between five and 600. And then the Pacer Pro, it's a good looking watch, but for CrossFit training, you're only gonna get, you're not gonna get any extra benefits, you just get a better looking watch for $100 more. And then you have the Pacer, which in my opinion, is just, it's just a good looking watch. I mean, it really checks all the boxes for a good looking watch. So how does it function? If you haven't seen any polar videos, it will lower it so I have a hand stay a little more still. You go through basically like watch faces and it's obviously the same central watch face, but your data around it is changing. So you've got weather face, you got their nightly recovery face, you got your training session, you click on this middle button, it's gonna take you into a deep dive of any of these data pieces. You have your training load face. Um, this is your overall activity for the day, which is kind of a cool metric. It's a combination of your steps and just your overall activity level, including workouts. So you're not just looking at a step counter. This is the generic one with no information. This is your total time spent in different heart rate zones for the week, your weather widget, and ta-da, back to where we were. I'm not gonna look at all the details. I mean, you can see some of these details Probably if you've researched the pacer, you're gonna see some of these details in other videos. Um, 
but we're going to look at the details when it comes to the functioning aspects of the fitness and wellness side that would benefit and um, be worthwhile to you and your CrossFit training. So with that, let's look at the app summary and then we'll talk the about basic landing page. This is the diary. So it's gonna be a culmination of your activities, how, what percentage of your goal. My watch hasn't synced, so it's not up to date. If you did a fitness test that day, it'll have your results, your last workout and stuff there. It'll tell you your load status, which is your training, it, how your sleep was basically in summary form, which is that poor, which is the nightly recharge, which we'll look at later in the video and then above usual actual sleep scores. So then you have a summary of your day. This can show you if you did a workout, you can see the little workouts here, or just your lowest heart rate of the day. And then if you wanna see it in graph form, you can click up there and see, you know, there's your workout in the middle and you can see a simple summary, but it just gives you the summary down below. And you can see that same daily goal status, which is just sort of like, were you active enough today for what you define as an active person, which is in a culmination of calories, steps, workouts, and overall movement time. It really is a useful stat compared to just hitting a 10,000 step goal a day that is silly. Um, then you have your nightly recharge, you have your uh, training load pro, which is we're gonna look at in detail. You have all your workouts and your fitness tests, and then you have a bunch of other information you can start. You could, if you don't have your watch, but you do have a chest strap, you could link it to the Polar uh, Flow app. And if, you, your, if your watch died and you have a chest strap, you can link your chest strap to here and it'll keep your metrics in place without the watch having to be physically present um, or on. You can track your, all your stuff here. This is where you can adjust your sport profiles. You can change what, um, edit. You can change what you see on the screen. You can go in here and you can you know add, add multiple items. You can see like how many items you can add. It's up to four, you, know, you can't add fifth. Um, but that's what you could do, and you could make multiple pages for you to use during your workout. Again, um, we're going to look at some of this stuff later. Maybe we won't look at that since we just talked about it here, but that's just the basics for the app overall. All right, so fully functioning. You have like all the different specs. I love, you know, just the different aspects of it. We're going to look at a couple of aspects in particular now on the fitness side, the first of which is the heart rate accuracy. So if you were just wearing this on your wrist and doing your CrossFit workouts, a number of other watches, you would have highly, highly inaccurate results. Um, we're going to look at how the heart rate turned out, and we're going to talk a little bit at the end of the fitness section about some of these components and how they, you know, what benefits there are. So let's look at the heart rate, and then we're going to look at the fitness aspects on the watch, and then we're going to look at it on the app and come back together. All right, so this is workout one. I'm not going to go through this in lengthy detail. Um, so you can see it actually, it was spot on for the second half. It didn't quite keep up with the first half. Um, workout two definitely kept up with some of the more intense intervals with longer rest times in between, but not the third one. Um, workout three missed the peaks, just missed, you know, there's a one minute break in between and then just missed it. And a lot of the, you know, the overall lifting portion was just sort of zigzaggy. In some ways you're getting the same exertion score as long as it's hitting the same peaks, even if there's a lag time. But workout four looked excellent. You know, obviously some offage in the lifting session on the front end, but the peaks um, uh, throughout the Metcon were good. Um, workout five, this was pretty spot on or pretty close. Um, all these things are, are pretty close. And in, in, in all in all with optical heart rate sensors, this is a good performance. Um, these are good scores. Now, again, you have times where it's off. Where like in the first, you know, these are like heavy back squats. The first section just didn't keep up at all with the change in heart rate. And even on the mid part of the Metcon in the back half did not keep up. But in general, at least is, is somewhat looking the same. And then this was probably the worst Metcon tracking as um, it did fine or did okay in the lifting session. So what do we see in all these? All of this came out to an analytical accuracy of 87%. So 87% accurate is what gets you this result, which to me is not accurate enough. It, it, it's going to be okay in a pinch if you have to rely on the optical heart rate sensor and you don't have your chest strap or your armband. But in simple terms, if you want good metrics, you've got to wear an armband or a chest strap if you're doing CrossFit or high intensity interval training. So good results, but let's talk about the rest of the fitness. Okay, so when you look at just the fitness side, we wanna see what the fitness things, obviously you're gonna go in here 
and you're gonna start a workout. And the workouts include multiple different types of things. They've just added 30 different sport profiles. Let me be honest with all these watches, all these watches that have 8,000 sport profiles. You can see in your history, so at least you know you did stand up paddleboard versus kayaking because you labeled it, it had a label, but it's all the same analytical aspects. It's your heart rate, it's your calories burned, you know, and if you're running or biking, then it's the kilometers or distance or the running power, depending on what watch you have, all that stuff. Um, but only Garmin, Garmin is probably the only one that has sport profiles that actually mean something. Cause like stand up paddleboard, will, they'll count your strokes per minute, your average strokes. And so you, you're, you know, you're getting something useful from it. But other than that, it does have multi-sport. This is a $200 watch that has multi-sport. That means you can do a triathlon with this puppy. It just has a lot to this watch. It is, it is the real deal. So this is a great watch. This is where you start the components. It gives you four data fields and you can scroll through a couple of different things. We're not going to look at that though, because it just gives you basic data fields. If you're in a CrossFit or you, you know, you're going to get what data fields you want to get. Then when you see the workouts themselves, when you go to see what the results look like, you could go into like my workouts are sort of like a light Murph, just sort of warming up. You see the basic components, it's going to look much better. So the cardio load, you see that there, that's the overall score. It's not touch screen. So it's all just button pushes, but this is the cardio load score. That's your exertion score. So, you know, zero to like 300 or something like that. Heart rate, time and heart rate zones, and then energy used. This is kind of a cool feature that is on the higher end watches. Like how much did I use carbs, proteins, and fats from that workout? How much did I burn based on, you know, probably what zones of heart rate I stayed in. So this is where you see, and if you're asking me what's the most important value on this page, it's just that cardio load score. How much exertion did you have? And then once you've, you know, logged your workout over time, it's going to give you your training load over time. So this is where you would see whether you're maintaining. So your strain is your seven day amount of exertion work. Your tolerance is your uh, 28 day. So if you're current work is below the 28 day pattern, then you are just maintaining or under detraining, productive or overreaching. Super similar. Um, and I am training less than usual because I pulled my hamstring and tweaked something in my back. Might even have already, you know, like a bulging disc or something. So that's not, that's all fair. Um, so activity is sort of a fitness related thing. It's just how much activity It's not, you know, steps, energy, you know, how much you worked out that day all culminates with, did you hit your activity goal for the day? I love this versus just a step counter. Um, the other thing that's useful slightly on the fitness side is a fitness test. You can do a walking test. I don't think that's that great. If you really do want to do a intense VO2 max test, you can do the running test, which just will keep making you run until you die, until you collapse. And then it'll give you a full evaluation. I don't know. The fitness test is one of the best things ever because you just basically sit still. And this is great for cardio or uh, CrossFit and high intensity interval training people because it's not based on how good of a runner you are. You just sit and it's actually pretty close to what I'm getting on Garmin's and other watches like the Apple watch on a, on a VO2 max test on a run uh, Garmin. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting 44s. Now it will get better. Uh, this was not great because of some of the injuries that I'm facing. Um, so that's not the greatest score I've ever gotten on this, but at the same time, it's an evaluation of some version of fitness, even if maybe it's not the most accurate VO2 max version that you can use as a CrossFit person, as a high intensity interval. And it, all you do is just sort of checks your heart for three minutes while you sit in place on the couch. So super fantastic. Let's look at the app to see how the fitness side comes out there. All right, so now we're just looking at fitness related stuff and there are a few places to look. Obviously you have the summary of some of these fitness elements. How was your workout? How was your fitness test um, overall here? But you're gonna wanna look at your sort of history tab. This is sort of like week to week. You can just sort of scroll back and forth and you can see like summary of workouts or like the calendar of workouts. And I'm going a little bit quickly, but you can see at the top here, how much time, like I spent nine hours working out this week and I did not put in much time in the zone five, nine minutes. You can see the, that's really kind of helpful to see like how much time you put in different heart rate areas. So you didn't, who cares if you worked nine, worked out nine hours, but you did it at like a zone one and two pace. You're not pushing your fitness. There's your cardio load, which we're going to look at in a second. 
And then here's you know a summary of a workout. So you have simple information up top, the most important of which is like your average heart rate and your max heart rate, how much did you peak it? And then your training load pro, see this middle section? You have your perceived, your RPE, which is like rate of perceived exertion. But the most important thing is that TREMP score. It's like an exertion score of the workout, how hard you pushed your body, and it's based on how much time you spent in the higher zones. So you can see each of those things, but in this workout, you can see it gives you a simple score, an exertion level score, which is fundamentally important for doing CrossFit because you can gauge your intensity of your workout. Same thing across multiple, all these other aspects. And all of this flows into your cardio load. So your cardio load, this is what they call training load pro, is that exertion score on a daily basis, added up and then averaged out. So you can see, you know, that when you have a big red, it pulls that little purple line up. When I have a big red line, it pulls the average up because when you look at these primary things, think about this. So the cardio load score of 91 is that day's exertion score. The strain purple score 64 is the average daily load score. If you just took all of the numbers up like the 91 and you took the 60 and you took the, not the seven, but you took the 89, you add them all up, all the seven day scores, you would, you're averaging 64, um, a strain score of 64. And then the tolerance is the average of your 28 days. So if your seven days are more exertion then your last 28 days, then you're growing your fitness. If they're below, then you're maintaining or detraining. So you can see like on the bottom, my colors are changing. So when it's dark purple there, that means I was productive. And what do you see? You see the little purple line coming above the blue line. The blue line being the four week average, the purple line being the seven day average. So I can see I'm pulling my fitness higher. Same, uh, you know, on the opposite side. When my purple is below, I'm pulling my fitness or I'm just sort of maintaining it or maybe it's slowly going down. And then the best and most beautiful thing of the training load tracking of your history is you hit the big zoom out and now you can see now you can see your whole history. You know, you can see your purple line, which is gonna be more fluctuant because it's a moving 70 average and your blue line, which is a more um, smooth sailing because it's a 28 day average, which really is more of a representation of your fitness development. So you can see over the last, well, since mid-March, um, let's just take this little spectrum here. I've been doing like hard 75 where, you know, I'm, I'm working out more time per day and every day. So you can see my fitness What's the blue line? The blue line is my fitness. Now, technically the blue line is just my 40, my 28 day average. So like in the four weeks is my average going up, but it is still a gauge of my fitness. Um, and you can evaluate yourself. You can look like, do my red lines come up as much as they did in the past over the last week? Even if you disregarded the purple line, you can see, are you putting in the exertion level as you have in the past. Like, I'm like, oh man, I wanna go back to this guy over here where this guy had 140 cardio load. So let me go get ready for Murph tomorrow morning and see if I can break 140. So that's the Training Load Pro. It shows you across all your history for all time. You know, obviously I wasn't wearing a Polar watch all the time, but all of it, all here. You can see what was my, when was I the most fit? Well, for me, it was actually, I think my, I think my record is like, on the 28 day moving average, the tolerance is 77. So I think I hit that recently. So anyway, that is the fitness program. Let's talk. All right, so what do you see in the fitness side? Obviously, when you look at the charts, like analytically it came in at like 87% accurate heart rate. You look at the charts, you just, you should definitely connect this to a chest strap. You should connect it to an armband. You could buy the Polar Verity Sense or even the Polar OH1 and get a great, relatively perfect accurate off the bicep you can get a chest strap you get a perfect accurate see off the chest strap linking it to the watch so you can still see your heart rate you can still see the time and the details of the functions but that's the way to go if you really want quality metrics quality stress score on the workout itself quality cardio load and training load you want to just link it to a chest strap because 
even though it came in at like 87% accurate, at the same time, you look at the charts and some of the big peak times for the heart were the lesser accurate times, so just don't do that. Um, it is a little bit of a simple system. Obviously, you're just getting a cardio load score, so it's just sort of like exertion score number one, whereas, you know, Sunto, Koros, and Garmin, and we're going to talk in summary about how this compares head-to-head -to, -head to some of the pro primary offerings, but those watches offer aerobic training effect and anaerobic training effect coupled with a load score. So you get an evaluation of how you're growing different components of your fitness coupled with the same sort of exertion score, which flows into the other metrics for training load. But it's still great and has all those things, and you can see just the big beauty of it all, and you can see how you can see your history, and it, you know, it's simple, yes. Is $200 also yes, and it does a basic component of tracking your rigor, your exertion level, and the load you've carried, and you can see your fitness development over time. Let's look at the wellness. We're going to look at the wellness aspects you can see on the watch and then on the app and then talk about them. For the health and wellness, and it boils down to this puppy. I mean, obviously, the fitness is a part of your health and wellness, but this is, you know where it all boils down. So this is your nightly recharge, which is a combination of your autonomic nervous system rejuvenation, which is your beat to beat intervals, like, a, like the overall heart health, not just your sleep stages, but heart health type stuff. Um, beat to beat, heart rate variability, respiration rate. That's another important thing. I mean, some of the same basic stuffs that Whoop's charging $30 a month for, this is giving you for $200 for the rest of your life. Um, and it's, it's worthwhile stuff. So you go into the autonomic nervous, we're gonna see all this in detailed form on the app, but you can just see what it looks like. Beat to beat intervals, averages, heart rate variability average. And it was not a great night's sleep. And that, I felt it and that's reality. And I took a nap later today and you know, I'm in a better, better place. Um, it doesn't show that here because it doesn't track naps, but you can see all the same details and we'll look at the app to see. But this is your, you know, in simple form, this, you, you know, I love it because when you wake up in the morning, it said, hey, are you done sleeping? It'll tell you if you're done sleeping later on in the day if you don't push the button, but you can just push the button and it gives you like a report. I know Garmin's gonna come out with a morning report type thing. That's what this is. I, I really think that's a cool function and, you know, Garmin's adding it to their lineup, I think, this week. So that's the wellness side. Let's look on the app and what you get details and you get day there. over. So this is yesterday, this is what we're looking at. And so you can see all the summary pieces, but on the bottom middle is your nightly recharge. Now, I haven't gone to bed yet, but here's the culmination of your nervous system recharge on the left, the ANS, and the sleep charge, which is basically just a sleep score. But let's take a look at each part in it, isolation. So what is this? It's giving you a score of negative 7.6, so a score of negative 10 to positive 10. And it's giving you a score based on these components, your heart rate, beat to beat average, heart rate variability, and breathing rate. And based on that, it's giving me a score that I slept poorly last night, and that's not, I mean, my nervous system did not rejuvenate as it should have last night, which is true. My nervous system didn't, but my sleep was barely better. So I got eight hours and 27 minutes of sleep. That is longer, I let myself sleep in, but it did not have the impact on my nervous system. Now you know, we'll look at this in a second, but look at all the different components. You can see your sleep stages. You can see them up at the top here, pure time listed. And you can see them on the bottom here where it says, well, how did this part of your sleep average relate to last? I mean, how much deep sleep relative to the others? You know, did you get more or less REM or deep sleep? And so it just has a lot of useful information besides the fact that it gives you a great score. And then on top of it, applies it to the nervous system. Now see, the nervous system might not have been an accurate assessment of my recovery from last night's sleep because they are technically taking these metrics for four hours, about an hour after you fall asleep and then for the following four hours. So if you did like me and you slept eight and you let yourself sleep in until 10, 18 in the morning, you know, you probably had more recovery than just the first four hours because it was a late night and there was reasons for the score being low. Same thing on the flip side, you know, good quality sleep. I just, I had a lot of, you know, made it happen that night and then I was compromised on the other night. So like I, I slept less and got a bad, so you can see simple direction. So this is the primary wellness aspect that you can track your recovery based on. All right, so looking at the wellness, it, I feel like it's excellent. I, you know what? I,
And in testing this watch, I realized how much I missed just the simple summary that comes from Polar. Now, I Garmin is a heads it is better. Garmin's overall wellness tracking is better because it has body battery, which is checking your stress levels at all time. And if you take a nap, you see the rejuvenation. You have a high stress day, you see the depletion in your overall physical strength you could take into a workout. But with this, I miss just a simple summary when I wake up just to see like nervous system rejuvenation, sleep quality rejuvenation, combined simple score. You are good, medium, poor, excellent, awesome, whatever it is. I, it, it is a great summary of multiple, multiple, multiple analytical components. So hats off to them. That is, is one of the best, in my opinion, of combining multiple elements, not just saying, hey, we, we're analyzing these elements, but it's like, hey, we're analyzing these elements and we're compiling them into two single scores in these departments. And then we're compiling that together into a little graph of whether you are in the dumps today or whether you're off to, you know, conquer Murph. So that's pretty awesome. I love the, you know, activity, you know, throughout the day, sort of just a wellness of your overall activity throughout the day. And that flows through to the fitness side, those types of things. And, you know, so there's a lot to be said about the quality of the wellness. So you think about everything, the functions as a watch, you know, the overall, you know, fitness side of development, the overall wellness side of development, it has all the primary components and that leads us to our summary. In summary form, there's one major complaint. The major complaint is the notifications are not trustworthy from the watch, from the phone to the watch. I will constantly, and I don't know how Polar hasn't figured this out. I don't know what they're not doing. It is 2022. Everybody else in the whole wide world has figured this out and they have not. Whatever their communication metric is with the phone, it is absolutely faulty relative to all the other players. And that's one big gripe that I'm just gonna put out there in a harsh form because it, it's just not how it should be. They need to recode how they communicate watch to phone, watch to phone, how they communicate that way because I will constantly not get notifications and then all of a sudden i'll get 15 or not that many let's say five notifications and it'll say 48 minutes ago somebody from work texted you or you know 48 minutes ago a meteor is going to hit the earth or whatever it, it's sort of like in my opinion it's worthless my phone is nearby enough that in 15 minutes i will have already seen that and then the watch tells me anyway and it'll tell me it'll be like buzz 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 when it finally re-engages with whatever faulty um, line of communication they're tapping into from the phone to the watch. So that's a major gripe. That is a big gripe. The only minor gripe um, besides that is that, you know, they could get more inventive. You know, it's been a few years with the same look to all the screens, even if they've added new uh, data screens and you can now take some of the data screens away, get a little more inventive with options for the watch itself and the usability. And the only Minor, minor tweak is you can now increase the backlight to high, but you know what? Actually, if you push the top button, you're getting a highest level or a higher level backlight than you would get even on the highest setting. Why is that? It should just be high. High should be the peak. I should get all the blaring goodness that I want to get. So those are the minor things. So in general though, on the summary, getting those super negatives or that one super negative out of the way, this is a fully functioning, excellent solution for somebody with a $200 budget to get into the CrossFit, to get into training and tracking both your wellness and your recovery, coupled with your training and training load. This is a great and fantastic, simple solution. I just keep saying that because it, it is really hitting all the points for what you would want. And the other crazy thing about it is that it is good looking. It looks freaking like their $600 Vantage V2 without the aluminum body, but it's just all black. Red accent button, that's fantastic. It is a good looking watch for $200 that also accomplishes and checks all the boxes. So let's now compare it to other watches in the industry. First one I'm gonna pick on the most is the Coros Pace 2. The Coros Pace 2, my opinion, does not compare head to head to the Polar Pacer. Absolutely not. It does not compare when you are training for CrossFit or high intensity interval training. And I'll break down exactly why. Number one, 
The Coros Pace 2 has one of the worst heart rate sensors on the optical side if you were only using the watch to track your heart rate in a CrossFit workout. Like, way off. Number two, in order to get the training load components in what they call Evo Labs, you have to run for 300 minutes in a smooth and steady pace. That is egregious, that is wrong, it is not something I could ever recommend, all the way up to the Vertix 2. If the Vertix 2 was suddenly selling for $250, I'd be like, if you want a cool looking watch. But either way, Coros Pace 2, in order for you to get any training load aspects, you have to run for 300 minutes, which is 30 days of 10 minutes a day, which is onerous in you, if you're a CrossFit high intensity interval, burn boot camp whatever type of person that's a lot of running that many of us absolutely do not want to do and the other major complaint is chorus has zero in my opinion on the wellness side the wellness and recovery side so especially in the pace too so you get like a gobbledygook um sleep analysis which is just a bunch of lines and it gives you sleep stages like how much time but none of us have the scientific wherewithal to to know is 47 minutes of deep sleep good? Is an hour and 12 minutes of REM sleep worthwhile? Is that what I need? Worthless. And so it's visually ugly and it doesn't provide any value. So no wellness takes you 300 minutes over the course of 42 days to even activate some training components. And it's primarily a runner's watch with maybe, you know, it's got running power from the wrist. That's great. Whatever, it, it's still not worth it. Not at all. Doesn't compare. Don't do it. Look away. Um, the next one you would compete with is I think, the Garmin 245. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking on that because the Garmin 255, all the rumor mills are saying it's coming out on Wednesday. Today is May 30th. It's coming out on the 31st or coming out on, on Wednesday, June 1st. I do think if you have $350, I'm going to tell you now before seeing even the specs, it's going to be a better watch. I mean, that has everything to it you could buy the music version and have downloadable music you can download playlists from spotify you can't do any of that stuff here um so it, it's just it's, it's just apples and oranges in some levels garmin's going to give you much higher le level analytics they're going to have much more specificity to the analytics that they give you higher level details on they're going to have many more uh, physiological developments that are coming um, that they're developing through all these companies that they own specifically like first beat so you'll get more physiological and analysis aspects on top of which you get like a million times more customization in the screen so does the pacer beat even the 245 maybe it's close on the 245 but i don't think so and the 255 it's not close 255 is better it's also 150 dollars more um the Grid X Pro and the Grid in the uh, Polar Vantage V2. Okay, so within the Garmin, within the Polar family, other competitors to this, the Grid X Pro, the Vantage V2. I'm going to sort of simply say, yeah, if you're a runner, those are going to be better because they have parametric altimeters. You're going to be able to have your hill splitter. You're going to be able to do different running things. And I'm not even looking at what those things are because that's not the point of this review. But it, if you just want the cooler design of the Grid X Pro, I would, or the cooler, like more sleek aluminum casing of the Vantage V2, and you have an extra $300 to put into it, do it. Do it. Except I wouldn't. And not to talk against the Pacer, I'd probably go to buy the Garmin 255 when it comes out on Wednesday. But the Grid X Pro, it's a cool looking watch. The Vantage V2 is a cool looking watch. Those are two of some of the best looking watches in my opinion, except for the screen size is a little small. They could make the screen 1.3 inches. But besides that, it, it's not really offering any value. You still get FuelWise, FitSpark, Nightly Recharge, Training Load Pro. It's not offering anything else that's of real felt value if you are truly just doing cardio, you know, uh, CrossFit and high intensity interval training. So that's that. The Sunto 5, that's a $300 watch from Sunto that in the Sunto 5 peak, I should say specifically, because the Sunto 5 is just kind of ugly and maybe that's picking on it for wrong reasons. But the Sunto 5 peak is a sharp looking watch and it's $300, so $100 more. It does offer some neat features. It's a smaller casing, 43 millimeters, but it's thicker and fatter. It does weigh about the same somehow. Um, it's a tough call because they have what they call resources. They do not give you quality sleep analytics. It's got your like one score, like you see a little tiny score that poorly laid out on the sleep analysis, but it will give you some of the time for stages of sleep. 
but it does resources, which is your stress tracking all day, which is sort of like heart rate variability tracking all day, which is a super useful physiological metric because it's an all day 24 seven thing. And then on the flip side, they have um, training peaks for their load analysis and training peaks is on point, is a really good training program. It's a lot harder to understand. It's not as visually simple to glance at and know what you're reading, but I do think it's analytically more detailed and I would say more accurate for your fitness development over time. So with that, consider the differences, what this looks like. It might be just a looks thing, but this has the best all-in-one package of the $200 price point that I have seen in a long time. And I think I mostly just like it because it is a good looking watch. And it has all, it hits all the buckets for $200. So with that, that is the Polar Pacers, the Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.